Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 23 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the Bayes theorem. Quite an interesting theorem in which we deal with conditional probabilities. After that, I began the discussion of discrete probability distributions. A very, very important um, topic and in this regard, I discussed with you the graph of the discrete probability distribution, the mean, the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation for a discrete probability distribution. After that, we talked about the concept of the distribution function. Today, I will elaborate upon the concept of the distribution function and I will explain to you the graph of the distribution function of a discrete random variable. Let us do this with the help of the example that you now see on the screen. Find the probability distribution and the distribution function for the number of heads when three balanced coins are tossed, depict both the probability distribution and the distribution function graphically. Now, in order to solve this problem, the first thing to note is that because the coins are balanced, therefore, the equiprobable sample space for this experiment is head, 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 head head tail, head tail head, tail head head, head tail tail, tail head tail, tail tail head and tail tail tail. Students, if we let x denote the number of heads that we obtain in this experiment, then obviously the values of x are 0, 1, 2 and 3. And the probabilities are 1 by 8, 3 by 8, 3 by 8 and 1 by 8 for the same reasons that we have discussed in earlier lectures. The classical definition of probability m over n gives us all these probabilities. And of course, the sum of these four probabilities is 1 so that we have a proper discrete probability distribution as you now see on the screen. If we are interested in drawing the line chart of this distribution, we get a graph of the form that you now see and it is very clear that this particular line chart is absolutely symmetric. Therefore, if we are uh, interested in finding the mean of this distribution, students, I hope you realize that you don't even have to go for the formula. Aapko pata to hai ke jo bilkul perfect symmetrical distribution hoti hai, uska mean jo hai, wo uske bilkul center mein lai karta hai. So, in this example, the x values are 0, 1, 2, 3 aur inka jo exact center hai, that is 1.5. Agar aap formula istemal karein, jo ke hum last time discuss kar hi chuke hai, that mu is equal to sigma x into p of x, to tab bhi you will get exactly the same result. Shayad aapko yaad ho, mene last time ye bhi aapko aapse kaha tha ke p of x ki jaga probabilities can also be denoted by small f of x and the formula for mu can be written as sigma x into f of x. Aaj is waqt hum ab distribution function ki baat karna chahte hain. So as you now see on the screen, if we cumulate the column of probabilities, we get first value 1 over 8 as it is. 1 over 8 plus 3 by 8 gives us 4 by 8. 4 by 8 plus 3 by 8 gives us 7 by 8. And 7 by 8 plus 1 by 8 is 1. Hence, the distribution function of this particular probability distribution is capital F of x is equal to 0 for 
all those x values which are less than 0, it is equal to 1 over 8 for all those x values which lie between 0 and 1 including 0 but excluding 1. It is 4 by 8 for x lying between 1 and 2 including 1 but excluding 2. It is 7 by 8 for x lying between 2 and 3, 2 included but 3 excluded and it is equal to 1 for all values of x greater than or equal to 3. सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि वो जो इतनी आसान सी टेबल थी यानी जो क्यूमुलेट किया था सिंपली द फर्स्ट वैल्यू एज इट इज एंड देन एडेड एंड एडेड फर्दर व्हाई इज इट दैट आई हैव एक्सप्रेस्ड दैट सिंपल थिंग इन सच अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड फॉर्म स्टूडेंट्स ये वो पॉइंट है जिसे समझना बहुत जरूरी है एंड आई विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू इन अ वेरी वेरी सिंपल मैनर एंड आई होप दैट यू विल कंसंट्रेट सबसे पहले आप इसका जो पहला पार्ट है उस पर गौर कीजिए मैंने आपसे कहा कि कैपिटल एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर ऑल वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स विच आर लेस देन जीरो इसका क्या मतलब है देखिए कैपिटल एफ ऑफ एक्स फ्रॉम द बेसिक डेफिनेशन दैट आई डिस्कस विद यू लास्ट टाइम वॉट वॉज इट दैट इट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट माई रैंडम वेरिएबल एक्स टेक्स अ वैल्यू less than or equal to some specified value x, small x और capital X का फर्क तो आपको याद ही होगा अब इस वक्त जब मैं ये कह रही हूँ कि capital F of x जीरो है for all those x values which are less than जीरो इसका मतलब ये है कि x के जीरो से कम होने के लिए probability जीरो है um, कोई इंडिविजुअल प्रोबेबिलिटी भी जीरो है और क्यूमुलेट भी करें तो जीरो है वेल दैट इज ऑब्वियस जब हम तीन कॉइन टॉस कर रहे हैं तो मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ हेड्स जो आ सकते हैं दैट इज जीरो वी कैन नॉट हैव माइनस वन हेड्स माइनस टू हेड्स माइनस फोर हेड्स और अगर हम ये वैल्यूज लिख भी लेते अपने उस कॉलम में जो हमने बनाया था जीरो वन टू थ्री तो उसके ऊपर हम लिख लेते माइनस वन माइनस टू माइनस थ्री एंड सो ऑन उनके अगेंस्ट अगर हम प्रोबेबिलिटीज लिखना चाहते तो वो क्या थी जीरो 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 इसलिए कि माइनस फोर हेड्स नहीं हो सकते इट इज एन इम्पॉसिबल इवेंट और इम्पॉसिबल इवेंट की प्रॉबिलिटी तो जीरो होनी है अगर वो जीरो का कॉलम प्रॉबिलिटीज के लिए हम बनाते तो उसके अगेंस्ट जो कैपिटल एफ ऑफ एक्स का कॉलम बनता जिसमें हमें वो क्यूम्यूलेट करनी थी तो स्टूडेंट्स क्या ये जाहिर नहीं है कि जीरो हम अगर आगे लिखते तो उसके बाद जीरो प्लस जीरो वुड हैव गिवन अस जीरो एंड अगेन जीरो प्लस जीरो वुड हैव गिवन अस जीरो फॉर ऑल दोज एक्स वैल्यूज विच आर इन द नेगेटिव पार्ट ऑफ द रेल लाइन so this is the reason why we express capital f of x in this manner now as you have noticed ke ye sirf shuru mein nahi ho raha is tarah ka expression all through maine likha hai so i would like you to look at the screen once again and try to concentrate on all those parts that we have for capital f of x as you can see for uh, the range x lying between 0 and 1 capital f of x is equal to 1 by 8 yani hum ye keh rahe hain ke 1 by 8 hai hamare capital f of x ki value sirf kisi ek isolated x value ke liye nahi balki un tamam x values ke liye which are lying between 0 and 0 0.99999 aaiye जरा अगली स्लाइड के जरिए इस पॉइंट को समझने की कोशिश करते हैं आई हैव रिटन अ फ्यू वैल्यूज बिटवीन द वैल्यूज जीरो एंड वन आई हैव रिटन जीरो पॉइंट टू जीरो पॉइंट फोर जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स एंड जीरो पॉइंट एट ऑब्वियसली आई कुड हैव रिटन एनी वैल्यू बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन 
But the point to note is that against all these values, the probabilities are 0. Yani, zahir hai ke 0 0.2 heads to nahi aa sakte na, na hi 0 0.6 aa sakte hain. Lehaza, these are impossible events aur inki jo probabilities hain, they are 0. Now, if you concentrate on the third column, students, that is the column of cumulative probabilities. The first value 1 by 8 as it is, 1 by 8 plus 0 gives you 1 by 8, 1 by 8 plus 0 again gives you 1 by 8, 1 by 8 plus 0 yet again gives you 1 by 8. Aap dekh rahe hain ke 0 or 0 0.9999 ke darmiyan aap koi bhi value likh le uski against capital F of x will come out to be 1 over 8. But the moment you arrive at the value x equal to 1, your cumulative probability becomes 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 and that is 4 by 8. Yani, aapki value achanak jump lagati hai from the value 1 by 8 to the value 4 by 8. This is exactly the reason why the graph of the distribution function of a discrete random variable is of a very interesting shape. As you now see on the screen, this particular graph is like a staircase. And because of this fact, it is also called a jump function or a step function. Jis serio ke steps hote hain, usi tarah se aapko ye ek step function nazar aa raha hai. The graph of the distribution function starts from minus infinity and goes up to plus infinity. And as you can see on the slide, the level of the graph is level 0 for all values of x less than 0. As soon as we arrive at the point x equal to 0, the graph takes a jump and it reaches level 1 by 8 and it maintains this level for all values of x from 0 to 0 0.999999 and so on. Lekin, the moment we arrive at the point x equal to 1, the graph takes a jump again and it reaches the level 4 by 8. It maintains this level until the value 1.9999 but then as soon as we arrive at the point x equal to 2 our graph jumps again and reaches the level 7 by 8 and lastly it takes the jump when we arrive at x equal to 3 and now it reaches the level 8 over 8 and that is 1. Yani sari baat ka lubbe lubab ye ke minus infinity se shuru hua aur plus infinity tak jayega aur darmiyan mein steps ki tarah ye chalega aur jumps lagayega at all those x values where we actually have non-zero probabilities. Students, iske baraks the graph of the distribution function of a continuous random variable is a smooth curve which rises from level 0 to the level 1. Is case mein bhi ye hamesha yaad rakhye ke jo lowest level hoga that will be 0 aur jo highest level humara distribution function ka graph attain kar sakta hai that is the value that is the level 1. 1 se upar ye ja nahi sakta. After all have we not discussed so many times that the sum of the probabilities is 1 and it can never be more than 1. Students, ye jo graph mein abhi aapko dikhaya, jaisa ke aapne dekha ke wo jumps jo hain, unke darmiyan uh, koi humne line vagara draw nahi ki thi, lekin in certain books you will find a dotted line um, in the vertical direction as you now see on the screen. These vertical dotted line segments do not have any significance from the mathematical point of view. In fact, from my point of view, it is better not to draw them. 
आइए अब ये देखते हैं कि हम इस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन को रियल लाइफ परस्पेक्टिव के हिसाब से किस तरह से इंटरप्रेट करेंगे जाहिर है कि इसका यही मफहम बनेगा कि इफ वी टॉस थ्री बैलेंस्ड कॉइन्स द प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ ऑबटेनिंग एट द मोस्ट वन हेड इज फोर बाई एट द प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ ऑबटेनिंग एट द मोस्ट टू हेड्स इज सेवन बाई एट ठीक है ना और राइट लेट इस नाउ कंसिडर एन अदर इंटरेस्टिंग एग्जाम्पल एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन अ लार्ज स्टोर प्लेसिस इट्स लास्ट फिफ्टीन क्लॉक रेडियोज इन अ क्लियरेंस सेल अनोन ट्वेंटी वन फाइव ऑफ द रेडियोज आर डिफेक्टिव इफ अ कस्टमर टेस्ट थ्री डिफरेंट क्लॉक रेडियोज सिलेक्टेड एट रैंडम वॉट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एक्स वेयर एक्स रिप्रेजेंट्स द नंबर ऑफ डिफेक्टिव रेडियोज इन द सैम्पल In order to solve this question, the first thing is to realize that out of a total of fifteen clock radios, ten are all right and five are defective. The total number of ways of selecting three radios out of fifteen is fifteen C three, according to the discussion that we have already had in an earlier lecture. Also. the total number of ways of selecting three good radios out of 10 is 10c3 and total number of ways of selecting no defective radio out of five defective radios is 5c0 and hence the total number of ways in which the event which is favorable to what i want is 10c3 into 5c0 hence the probability of obtaining no defective radio is 10c3 into 5c0 divided by 15c3 and this is equal to 0.26 students aapne gaur kiya ke is computation mein मैंने दो रूल्स इस्तेमाल किए हैं द फर्स्ट इज द रूल ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन और जैसा कि पहले कई दफ़ा एक्सप्लेन किया जब ऑर्डर की इम्पोर्टेंस नहीं है एंड वी आर ओनली इंटरेस्टेड इन द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द रेडियोज दैट वी आर दैट वी आर ड्राॅइंग देन ऑफकोर्स वी विल अप्लाई द रूल ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन और दूसरा रूल जो इसमें अप्लाई हुआ ऑफकोर्स दैट इज द रूल of the classical definition of probability m over n favorable over the total isliye ke jaisa ke statement of the question me kaha gaya ke wo jo radius hum select kar rahe hain that selection is not deliberate it is at random aur jab kabhi bhi aap randomly koi uh, drawing karenge to equally likely ka jo uh, uske andar phenomenon hai that will come in now what i have just computed is the probability of x equal to 0 where x represents the number of defective radios in my sample of size 3 bilkul isi tarah se we will compute the probabilities of x equal to 1 x equal to 2 and x equal to 3 and as you now see on the screen these probabilities come out to be 0.49 0.22 and 0.02 the sum of these probabilities comes out to be 0.99 aur ye jo fark hai um one se jo thoda sa fark nazar aa raha hai that is only because of rounding error the line chart of this distribution is as you now see on the screen and students i hope that by looking at this line chart it is clear to you that it is not at all necessary for a discrete probability distribution to be absolutely symmetric as you can see on the slide the shape of this particular probability distribution is slightly positively skewed 
और आइए अब इस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन का जिक्र करते हैं बिल्कुल उसी तरह जैसे पिछले एग्जाम्पल में एक्सप्लेन किया वी कैन कंस्ट्रक्ट अ कॉलम ऑफ क्यूमुलेटिव प्रॉबिलिटीज एंड एज यू सी ऑन द स्लाइड वी हैव कैपिटल एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू सिक्स अगेंस्ट द वैल्यू एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो और उसके बाद जीरो पॉइंट टू सिक्स प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फोर नाइन इज जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव प्लस जीरो पॉइंट टू टू इज जीरो पॉइंट नाइन सेवन एंड सो ऑन इफ वी विश टू इंटरप्रेट दिस थर्ड कॉलम दैट वी हैव जस्ट कंस्ट्रक्टेड the interpretation will be something like this the probability that i will have at the most one defective radio in my sample is 0.75 and the probability that i will have at the most two defective radios in my sample is 0.97 all right now that we have discussed in detail the concept of the distribution function students i now begin the discussion of the concept of mathematical expectation as you now see on the screen let a discrete random variable x have possible values x1 x2 so on up to xn with corresponding probabilities f of x1 f of x2 so on up to f of xn such that sigma fx is equal to 1 then the mathematical expectation or simply the expectation or the expected value of x denoted by e of x is defined as sigma x into f of x e of x is also called the mean of x and it is usually denoted by the letter mu aapne dekha ki ye to koi naya concept nahi hai ye to exactly wohi cheez hai jo humne last lecture mein discuss ki thi when we try to find the mean of our probability distribution और आज भी एक इससे पहले जो एग्जाम्पल किया उसमें मीन की बात हुई यस सर्टनली एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू मीन को ही कहते हैं और सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि इसको एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू क्यों कहते हैं इसकी वजह ये है स्टूडेंट्स दैट दिस इज दैट वैल्यू दैट वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट टू हैव इफ वी रिपीट आवर रैंडम एक्सपेरिमेंट अगेन and again and again and again a very very large number of times yani main kya kehna cha rahi hu what i am trying to say is take that same example of tossing the three coins aap teenon ko toss kijiye ho sakta hai ki aapko teenon tails mil jaye no head dobara toss kijiye you might get three heads toss it again you might get two heads and then toss it again and you might get one head is tarah aapko ek sequence milta chala jata hai 0 1 3 2 1 0 and you just go on and on and on if you do this ex experiment a very 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 large number of times then on the average in the long run you expect to have per toss 1.5 heads अब आप कहेंगे कि 1.5 पॉइंट हेड्स क्या हुआ लेकिन स्टूडेंट्स ये बात तो मैं आपको पहले भी समझा चुकी हूँ कि ऑन द एवरेज डेर हेड पर टॉस ऑफ थ्री कॉइंस का मफहूम ये है कि अगर आप इन तीन कॉइंस को एक दफ़ा ना टॉस करें बल्कि दस दफ़ा टॉस करें तो आप एक्सपेक्ट कर सकते हैं कि डेर नहीं पंद्रह हेड आपको मिलेंगे इन ऑल वही बात कि आप उस डेसिमल को शिफ्ट कर दें एक स्टेप uh, आगे सो यू गेट 15 हेड्स इन 10 टॉसेस और 150 हेड्स इन 100 टॉसेस सो दिस इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मैथमेटिकल एक्सपेक्टेशन 
the value that we expect to have on the average if we repeat the experiment a very, very large number of times. Let me explain this to you with the help of a very interesting example. As you now see on the screen, suppose we have a situation in which we can say that if it rains, an umbrella salesman can earn $30 per day. If it is fair, he can lose $6 per day. What is his expectation if the probability of rain is 0.3? Students, अब इसके अंदर दो तीन पॉइंट्स देखने वाले हैं पहली बात तो ये कि शायद आप हैरान हो रहे हों कि हाउ कैन ही लूज सिक्स डॉलर्स वेल इट इज ऑब्वियस अगर वो इन्वेस्टमेंट कर चुका है एंड ही हैज ऑलरेडी स्पेंड अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ मनी ऑन बाइंग दोज अम्ब्रेलाज दैट ही इज वॉन्टिंग टू सेल तो अगर वो uh, सूरज निकला हुआ है और बिल्कुल बारिशें नहीं हो रही हैं तो जाहिर है कि वो चूंकि वो स्पेंड कर चुका है उस हिसाब से we can say that he will lose a certain amount of money acha dusri baat ye hai ki humne isme abhi padha ki hum keh rahe hain ki what is his expectation if the probability of rain is 0.3 zahir hai ki is shakhs ke point of view se to expectation jo hai wo paison ke hi ke hawale se hai na ki how much can he expect to earn um from his uh, sale selling his umbrellas and the information that we have is that the probability that it will rain on any day is 0.3 and the probability that it will not rain is obviously 0.7 by the rule of complementation 1 minus 0.3 will give us 0.7 to aaiye dekhte hain ab screen par ke iski mathematical picture kya banti hai As you can see, the two mutually exclusive events are rain and no rain, and the random variable that we are interested in, the amount earned, has only two possible values. If it rains, x is equal to thirty, and if it does not rain, x is equal to minus six. ये minus six मैंने इसलिए लिखा कि Losing six dollars is equivalent to earning minus six dollars. Now, as I have just said, the probability of rain, or in other words, the probability of x being equal to thirty, is zero point three, whereas the probability of x equal to minus six is zero point seven. in order to compute the expected value of x all we have to do is to multiply the column of x with the column of probabilities and doing so we obtain 13 into 0.3 equal to 9.0 and minus 6 into 0.7 equal to minus 4.2 adding the two numbers we obtain e of x equal to 4.8 in other words students hum ye keh rahe hain ke ye jo shakhs hai jo umbrella salesman hai he can expect on the average to earn 4.8 dollars per day lekin yaad rakhiye ki ye concept बहुत ज्यादा रेपिटेशन सो so, इसका ये मतलब है कि अगर वो सेलिंग का ये प्रोसेस बहुत दिन तक जारी रखे ऐसे बहुत से दिनों तक जिनमें प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ रेन 0.3 ही मेंटेन हो तो फिर एट द एंड ऑफ दैट पीरियड ही विल हैव अर्न दैट मच अमाउंट व्हिच इज इक्विवेलेंट टू 4.8 per day. तो इसका मतलब यह हुआ कि जब कभी बारिश होती है ही इज अर्निंग थर्टी डॉलर जब बारिश नहीं होती ही इज लूजिंग सिक्स डॉलर लेकिन एट द एंड ऑफ इट ऑन द एवरेज ही इज स्टिल 
earning and he is earning $4.8 per day. इस सारी डिस्कशन के अंदर एक और पॉइंट भी बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट है मैं आपसे ये पूछना चाहती हूँ कि ये जो अर्निंग की बात हम कर रहे हैं X is the number of dollars he earns and we are saying that either he earns $30 or he earns minus 6. ये जो वेरिएबल है स्टूडेंट्स इज इट अ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल और इज इट अ कंटिन्यूस वेरिएबल इसका जवाब ये है कि अगर हम क्वेश्चन को इस तरह से पोज करें जिस तरह के हमने इस एग्जाम्पल में किया है देन इट इज़ अ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल इसलिए कि इस तरह के सिनेरियो में आइदर इट इज़ थर्टी और इट इज़ माइनस सिक्स यानी बारिश हो रही है तो थर्टी है बारिश नहीं हो रही तो माइनस सिक्स है सो वी कैन नॉट हैव माइनस फाइव माइनस फोर एंड हाफ प्लस वन पॉइंट सेवन और इस हवाले से द डिसकन्टीन्यूटी इज देयर एंड देर फॉर इट इज़ अ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल ऑफकोर्स यू कैन आर्ग्यू के इन अ रियल लाइफ सनेरियो ऐसे तो नहीं हो सकता मे बी अदर वैल्यूज आर पॉसिबल एंड सो ऑन बट ऑफकोर्स द पॉइंट इज दैट हेयर वी ओनली वॉन्टेड टू एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मैथमेटिकल एक्सपेक्टेशन इन अ वेरी सिंपल मैनर और उसके लिए ये एक बहुत मुख्तर वर्जन उसका करके हमने आपको एक्सप्लेन किया तो ये बहुत अहम है कि किसी भी सीनैरियो में आप उस के मुताबिक जो लिखा है या जो प्रेजेंट किया गया है आपको प्रॉब्लम आप कंसीव करें कि वेदर यू आर डीलिंग विद अ डिस्क्रीट सिचुएशन और अ कंटिन्यूस सिचुएशन ऑल राइट नाउ दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द मैथमेटिकल एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ एक्स आई वुड लाइक टू ड्रॉ योर अटेंशन टू द फैक्ट दैट फॉर मेनी पर्पजेज वी आर ऑल्सो इंटरेस्टेड इन computing the mathematical expectation of some function of x and as you now see on the screen if capital h of x is a function of the random variable x then capital h of x is also a random variable and it also has an expected value because any function of a random variable is also a random variable स्टूडेंट्स अब इसमें कोई इतनी कंफ्यूज होने वाली बात नहीं है देखिए एच ऑफ एक्स तो एक सिंबल है ना द फंक्शन कैन बी एनी फंक्शन इट मे बी एक्स स्क्वायर एक्स प्लस वन टू माइनस एक्स और एनी सच फंक्शन तो साफ जाहिर है कि अगर एक्स वेरी करेगा तो एक्स स्क्वायर भी तो वेरी करेगा ना इन द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द थ्री कॉइन्स दैट वी हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग एक्स की वैल्यूज थी जीरो वन टू थ्री और अगर मैं एक्स स्क्वायर की बात करूं तो साफ जाहिर है कि एक्स स्क्वायर की वैल्यूज हैं जीरो वन फोर नाइन अब एक्स खुद जो है दैट इज अ रैंडम वेरिएबल बिकॉज इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द रैंडम एक्सपेरिमेंट के जो हम टॉस कर रहे हैं उसमें हमें कितने हेड हासिल हो रहे हैं तो उसी तरह एक्स स्क्वायर जो है जीरो वन फोर नाइन दैट इज ऑल्सो a random variable because that is also associated with the same random experiment agar hame ek head mil raha hai to hamara variable x square jo hai that takes the value 1 aur agar hame do heads mil rahe hain to hamara jo variable x square hai uski value 4 hai is hisab se i hope you understand that the probability of x equal to 1 is the same as the probability of x square equal to 1 kyunki probability to students x ya x square pe depend nahi karti probability to us event pe depend karti hai jiske tahat x ki value 1 ho rahi hai aur x square ki bhi is situation mein 1 hi ho rahi hai wo event kya hai ke jab humne toss kiya we obtained only one head and two tails isi tarah the probability that x is equal to 2 is the same as the probability that x square is equal to 4 kyun isliye ke ye dono jo values hain pehli x ki aur dusri x square ki 
they depend on that event whose probability is 3 over 8, the event that I will get two heads and one tail. Is Havale say uh, we are able to understand how to compute the expected value of h of x. As you see on the screen, e of h of x is equal to sigma h of x into f of x. In particular, if h of x is equal to x square, then e of x square is equal to sigma x square into f of x. It is important to note that e of x square is not the same as e of x whole square. Is ki wajah to saaf zahir hai, mainne aap se kaha tha na, ke e of x is sigma x into f of x. Uska jo square karenge, to wo us sum ka square ho raha hai, jo us column ka sum hai. Lekin e of x square is sigma x square into f of x. Yani aap ek column construct karenge of x square into f of x aur uska sum karenge, which is not the same thing as we just discussed. Is liye ye jo differentiation hai, that is very important. Also, if h of x is equal to x minus mu whole square, then e of x minus mu whole square is equal to sigma x minus mu whole square into f of x. This particular expected value is called the variance and it is denoted by sigma square as indicated in the last lecture. The shortcut formula for the variance as indicated before is e of x square minus e of x whole square. And if we are interested in computing the standard deviation, we will find the positive square root of the variance. Students, aap recall karenge ke pichle lecture mein humne mean or variance ke ilawa coefficient of variation bhi compute kiya tha. And that is very, very easy as soon as you have found the mean and the standard deviation. You can divide the standard deviation by the mean and multiply it by, by 100 in order to get the coefficient of variation. Or is ka fayda kya hai? Jaisa ke pehle bataya gaya, aap compare kar sakte hai variability of one particular probability distribution with the variability of another probability distribution. Mean or variance dono expected value ke under hum compute kar sakte hai. To students, jo higher moments hai, the third moment, the fourth moment and so on, of course, they can also be computed in the same manner. As you now see on the screen, if h of x is equal to x raised to k, where k is 1, 2, 3 and so on, then expected value of x raised to k is equal to sigma x raised to k into f of x. And this is called the kth moment about the origin. Ab iske andar aap note kare hai ki jab bohat pehle humne sample data ke liye moments discuss kiye the, tab bhi to humne kuch isi tarah se define kiya tha na, ke for example, the first moment about 0 was sigma x minus 0 whole raised to 1 over n or yaha pe we can say expected value of x minus 0 whole raised to 1. Is liye ke vaha pe jo sigma over n yani sum over n hum karte the, wo bhi to mean hi tha na. Kisi bhi quantity ka sum kare aur usko number of terms se divide kar de, to wo mean hi hota hai na. Aur yaha par expected value ka matlab hai ke mean. So, 
you, you must uh, try to understand that they are very, very similar. Jab bhi aap sample data se uh, ye cheezein compute karne ki koshish karenge, aap sum over n karenge. Aur jab bhi aap probability distribution ke liye ye cheezein nikalne ki koshish karenge, aap expected value compute karenge. They are basically one and the same thing. To yahan, jaysa mein keh rahi thi, ke first moment about zero, ya first moment about the origin ka matlab, yahan pe kya hoga? Expected value of x minus zero raised to one. Ab minus zero likhne ki to koji zarurat hi nahi hai. So we can write expected value of x raised to one. Ya simply, expected value of x. So this is the first moment about zero, yeah, first moment about the origin. Lekin agar second moment mein interested hain, to kya ho jayega? Expected value of x raised to two. Third moment about zero, expected value of x raised to three. And so generally, kth moment about zero is expected value of x raised to k. Or jo formula hai, jaysa ke kai dafa kaha, e of anything is sigma of that thing into f of x. Bahut si baat hai jo abhi tak ki, aur bahut si slides jo aapne dekhi, unka jo lubbe lubab hai na, wo yehi hai. e of anything is sigma of that thing into f of x. And of course, ये जो फॉर्मूला मैं आपको दे रही हूँ, ये जो टिप मैं आपको दे रही हूँ, दिस इज़ इन द केस ऑफ़ अ डिस्क्रीट प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन। अगर हम कंटिन्यूअस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की बात करें, देन द समेशन साइन विल बी रिप्लेस्ड बाय इंटीग्रेशन। और प्योर मैथ्स में इंटीग्रल्स तो आपने पढ़े ही ह� we are concentrating on the discrete situation. Ye to the moments about zero. But then of course, we can also compute the moments about the mean. As you now see on the screen, if h of x is equal to x minus mu whole raised to k, then we get an expected value, which is called the kth moment about the mean. And it is denoted by mu k, that is mu k is equal to sigma x minus mu whole raised to k into f of x. Ab iske andar bhi, of course, hum k ki values change kar sakte hain. We can put k equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and we will get mu 1, mu 2, mu 3 and mu 4, the first four moments about the mean. Please ye note ki jay कि अगर mu के साथ subscript लगा है, then we are talking about moments. और अगर mu के साथ कोई subscript नहीं है, we are talking about the mean. और ये भी आपको याद होगा कि first moment about the mean, यानी mu one, that is always zero. इसलिए जो तीन moments हमें compute करने होंगे, they are mu two, mu three and mu four. Either we do them by this formula that you just saw or we first find the moments about zero and then use those relationships that I discussed with you in an earlier lecture that connect the moments about the mean with the moments about zero or about any arbitrary origin A. Ye moments nikalne ke baad hume kya nikalna hota hai? As you will recall, we would like to compute the two moment ratios that will enable us to talk about the skewness and the kurtosis of our probability distribution. And as you now see on the screen, the first moment ratio is beta 1 is equal to mu 3 square over mu 2 cubed and the second one is beta 2 equal to mu 4 over mu 2 square. Aap note kare, once again, 
that the formulas are exactly similar to the formulas that you had before. Pehle hum B1 aur B2 keh rahe the aur M3 ya M4 keh rahe the aur ab B ki jaga the notation is beta aur M ki jaga it is mu with a subscript. Beta 1 will enable us to determine the skewness of our distribution and beta 2 tells us about the kurtosis. Aapko yaad hai ke abhi kuch der pehle uh, radios ke example mein the line chart of our probability distribution was slightly positively skewed. Iska matlab ye hua ke agar hum beta 1 nikale for that example it should it will not come out to be 0 because as you know if the distribution is absolutely symmetric then beta 1 will be exactly equal to 0. So, I would like to encourage you students to solve that question on your own. Find a mu 2, mu 3 and also mu 4, find beta 1 and beta 2 and see what you get. Also you can do that for the first example, the one of the tossing of the 3 coins in which case you remember we obtained an absolutely symmetric distribution. The next concept that I am going to discuss with you now is properties of mathematical expectation. There are certain properties which assist us in computing the various expected values in a very convenient manner. As you now see on the screen, the first property is that if C is a constant, then expected value of C is equal to C. In other words, the expected value of a constant is the constant itself. I would like to explain this particular point to you not by deriving it in a mathematical way, but by giving you a very simple example. Dekhe, aapko shayad hansi bhi aaye, lekin aap is example ko dekhe. कि आप ये सपोज करें कि एक प्रोफेसर ने एक बहुत ही मुश्किल टेस्ट अपनी क्लास को दे दिया और कुछ इस कसम का टेस्ट था कि तमाम स्टूडेंट्स वो जो 30 35 स्टूडेंट्स थे एवरीबॉडी गॉट 2 मार्क्स आउट ऑफ 20 एवरीबॉडी गॉट 2 मार्क्स आउट ऑफ 20 व्हाट व्हाट इज द मीन मार्क ऑब्वियसली 2 जब सारों के ही दो-दो नंबर हैं तो मीन ने भी तो 2 मार्क्स ही होना है ना एंड दिस वेरिएबल इन दिस केस वाज नॉट अ वेरिएबल वेरी नहीं कर रहा था ना सबका एक ही नंबर आ रहा है सो इट इज अ कांस्टेंट एंड द मीन वैल्यू ऑफ दिस कांस्टेंट इज इक्वल टू द कांस्टेंट इट इज इक्वल टू 2 द नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन expected value of a x plus b is equal to a times expected value of x plus b where a and b are any two constants. Aye, is um, property ko usi example ke zariye understand karne ki koshish karte hain jo humne aaj ke lecture ke shuru mein discuss kiya. As you see on the screen for the tossing of the three balanced coins x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and the probabilities are 1 by 8, 3 by 8, 3 by 8 and 1 by 8. Now when we multiply the x column with the column of probabilities, the sum of that column is 1.5. As we have stated in the beginning of this lecture, the mean number of heads in a very large number of tosses of the three coins is 1.5 heads per toss. Now suppose that we are interested in finding the expected value of the random variable 2x plus 3. Then we carry out the following computations. Sabse pehle hum 2x plus 3 ka column banayenge because that is the new variable that we are interested in. So when we substitute x equal to 0 
in the expression 2 x plus 3, our value comes out to be 3, the next one comes out to be 5, then we have 7 and 9. As I indicated earlier, the probabilities remain the same and multiplying the column of 2 x plus 3 with the column of probabilities, we obtain 3 by 8, 15 by 8, 21 by 8 and 9 by 8. Adding these, we get 48 divided by 8 which is equal to 6. In other words, the expected value of the random variable 2x plus 3 is equal to 6. Ab aap note kare ki ye ek nea random variable hai, jo ke pehle random variable ki algebraic manipulation ke zariye aya hai, aur is ne variable ki jo expected value hai, that is 6. Jo property hum yaha verify karna cha rahe hai, wo kya hai? Expected value of ax plus b is equal to a times expected value of x plus b. Is example may obviously a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. And as you now see on the screen, expected value of 2x plus 3 which is equal to 6 can be written as 2 times 1.5 plus 3 and that is equal to 2 times e of x plus 3 and hence we have verified that expected value of ax plus b is indeed equal to a times expected value of x plus b. Students, the two properties that I have discussed with you are valid in the case of univariate situation. Yani, a ki random variable hai x or uski manipulation aap kar rahe, kar rahe hai ya usse related baatein aap kar rahe But then we also have two very important properties which are expected value of x plus y is equal to expected value of x plus expected value of y and the other one that if x and y are independent then x expected value of x into y is equal to expected value of x into expected value of y. The point to understand is that we will be discussing those properties in detail but we can do that only in that situation when we deal with not a univariate situation but the bivariate situation. That will come later. In the next lecture, the one immediately after today's, I will first discuss with you the Chebyshev's inequality in case of a probability distribution. And after that, we will start the discussion of the univariate situation for a continuous random variable. Having discussed the univariate situation, we will go to the bivariate situation and in that lecture, we will be discussing those other two properties. So, you have seen students that your journey hai in the area of probability distributions actually abhi uska apne sirf aagaz hi kiya hai. Many exciting things are yet to come and in the meantime I would like to encourage you to practice all the concepts that you have done until now so that you feel prepared to uh, address the concepts that will come after this. My very best wishes to you and until next time, Allah Hafiz.